Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, uh, I had a number of uh, comments and some emails from people since my last uh, video asking how I'm getting on. So I thought I'd better uh, just give you an update on that. So today's Thursday and uh, well you know how long it is since I had my heart attack. So last Saturday I was sitting with the computer just reading the news and stuff and I got a slightly strange feeling across my chest and more importantly into my arms. So I sort of said to Linda, um, let's go to the hospital. So I went along the ER and I didn't have to wait. I guess that's because I walked in and said, look, I had a heart attack two weeks ago and I'm feeling strange. So anyway, they gave me an ECG and uh, took me through and uh, took a blood sample and started to do tests and all that sort of thing and there is one particular compound that shows up in your blood which comes from damaged heart muscle and the doctor wasn't too happy with the level of that so they took another blood test and of course you've got to wait so i was there about five or six hours and that one he wasn't happy with either so there was a little bit apparently of argy bargy backwards and forwards between him and someone else but anyway they kept me in overnight and of course took more blood then the next morning the uh, doctor came and he said okay good news uh, that particular compound level has gone down we think it was just sort of a residual amount from my heart attack the week or whatever it was before two weeks I think it was but they said uh, we're going to keep you in and tomorrow we're going to do the thing up your vein and have a look at that one remaining artery. So I, uh, oh, glory. I said, well, you know, if you're going to go to all the trouble of putting the catheter thing up my vein and all the equipment and everything, and you know you're going to do this in November, I've been given a date, why don't you just do it? Well, apparently, stents sort of can't be used proactively. You know, if they see that a vessel's clogging up and it's only like 30% or something, it's not good apparently to put one in then, which is why they wait until they're sort of 70, 80% blocked. Anyway, the next day they did the procedure. When they did it before, as I said, they went in through my wrist. I mean, I bet you can't even see that. It's like a pin prick. But this time they went in my groin. And of course, because it's just local anaesthetic and what have you. When I had it done before, I was well out of it. Uh, it was a bit noticeable, it was a little unpleasant. But anyway, they did that and he came back and he said, right, we had a look at the stents we put in. They're fine. Um, but when we looked at this other artery, they have another little mathematical thing. He said the gradient was 2.78, I think he said. And he said, when it gets to 2.7, we like to do the stent. So anyway, they actually put two stents in because the length of artery that was clogged up was a little bit longer. I guess, as I mentioned, it's like putting a helicoid in. So they had to put two in to do the actual length of artery. So that was done. Everything was fine. They kept me in for another day. I think, at a rough estimate, I had 21 blood samples drawn. Because if you're in cardio, apparently, they wake you up every four hours to do your vitals and um, to take a blood sample. So anyway, they did all that. They said it was all completely good. I came home on Tuesday to go back to see the cardiologist. And uh, that's about it. They gave me some more pills. They even had an argument about that. I had four pills to take from last time. And when I was being discharged I said to the cardio guy I said oh yeah they've given me extra pills and he said what what hang on I don't want you to take anything except the four I prescribed so off he goes and then when they finally discharged me apparently the head honcho doctor had said no I won't take these extra ones it was like a beta blocker which the cardio fella reckoned I didn't need uh, because my pulse rate was quite low anyway but whatever I'm taking six tablets a day and that are, I have several little bottles like this, which has a number of tiny little pills in, 
and they are nitric. It's just like on the telly, you know, <gasps> and they stick the thing in. So uh, this is nitroglycerin. You put one under your tongue and just let it dissolve if you get chest pains. And he said, I don't mean a twitch. If you get a pain, take one of these. If need be, take another one in five minutes. If need be, take another one five minutes after that. But if you have to take the third one, you should be on your way to hospital. So I've just got to take it steady. Uh, they gave me some <laughs> stuff about what to eat and uh, exercise I'm supposed to do like 10 minutes exercise a day and stuff but the uh, one good thing was cardio fella said to me oh didn't you see your hike or something and I said well I have like 30 acres here that I'm always tromping around which is on the hillside as well I said but I, I, I do do this sort of very energetic uh, motorcycle sport I said so I, I'll probably have to knock that on the head and he said I don't see why so we'll work up to that but having said that, I know most of you are in the UK and other people are scattered around the world, but I know I have quite a few people who watch uh, in the US. So what I have decided to do, much as it pains me to do it, is I'm going to build myself a lighter trials bike. Even lighter than this. What I would like to do, because I don't want a two stroke, is get a Tiger Cub engine. So if anybody out there and I've shipped engines abroad before, it's very expensive and there's a lot of paperwork so basically it's got to be somebody in the US. But if you know where there's a Cub engine, which would be perfect, or even a complete Cub, although, you know, I don't like to use a complete bike because you end up throwing most of it away. You know, what I need is engine. Cub wheels would be good. Uh, forks. I've got some forks. I mean, if it's, a, if it's a mountain cub, or a trials model cub, which would be, well, mountain cub or T20T would be great because it has the right gearbox and turtles. But they also have the heavier forks, actually the ones like these. And the, I think that the, one, the ones they used actually were off the Triumph 3TA, the 350. But they're basically exactly the same size and everything as uh, these BSA ones. But I do have a pair of forks. I was given a year ago, must be 12, 13 years ago, a chap who lives uh, up this little road at the back here. He gave me a Harley Sprint. <gasps> you see, a Harley? Well, it's actually one of the Air Mackie laid down singles, 350. I've still got the engine. Frame was an absolute, oh. I don't know if you remember the Air Mackie 350s, but they had this beautiful curvy tube frame. Of course, Harley kept the sort of geometry of it, but the whole back end of the frame is a casting. I mean, it weighs a ton. But anyway, they had quite nice forks in them, and I do have the forks. They had big hubs, so that's unfortunate. But I've got quite a nice pair of forks, and I think they might be sort of 30-inch forks, but when I'm better, I'll pull them out of the shed. So anyway, <laughs> I'm waffling. See, it didn't stop me waffling. So that's the thing. I seem to be fully recovered. The prognosis is everything will be excellent. There was no damage to the heart muscles and things. So I've just basically got to get over it and get myself back up to uh, 100% really, the uh, cardiologist thinks. So I won't be in the workshop for a while. It's like when I had my shoulder done rather than sort of ask the surgeon well when can I do this when can I do that I just said I'm not going to ride this year so I'm going to do the same thing here I'm not going to just try little bits uh, so we'll give it a couple of weeks and then when I feel really good or maybe when I've seen the cardiologist even we'll start back we're going to start doing the tank right uh, get this get this one finished and in the meantime while I'm looking for a cup I'm also trying to teach myself uh, free CAD. You know, I've been writing computer programs for since the 70s, for 50 years. Uh, I don't know whether it's sort of slowly dying cells and, you know, not being able to learn things when you're older, but it's really difficult. I watch him do something, I think, oh yeah, and I make a couple of notes, and I think, right, I'm going to do that, and then I start, and I'm like, how the hell did he do that? And I go back, and I'm thinking, no, it won't do that. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm learning FreeCAD. I'm 
because I want to design a frame. I have some thoughts on a frame, uh, so what I'd like to do is build a complete frame, it's a cub engine, bits and pieces. The cub engine is only 50 some pounds I found. This is, well a 250 is 80 pound. This I think is 83. So, as one of my frames only weighs, with complete rolling chassis only weighs about 100 pound, I can maybe build a bike that's 160, 170 pound which would be nice. That would be a hundred pounds lighter than the Enfield. Of course it wouldn't be a nice big long stroke engine, but never mind. Can't have everything, can you? All right, so that's it. You don't have to worry about my health. Uh, and uh, we'll just get back to the videos as and when we can. All right. So until I see you again, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.